Hi guys, Chris here. So, as many of you might remember, I actually did a video a while ago, which you can watch up here, called Vegan and Minimalism, or Veganism and Minimalism, something like that. And really, the whole minimalism journey for me started with June Rider. So, June Rider turned me vegan in November 2014, and then I started to learn a lot about minimalism from him. So, he would talk about um, how to basically, you know, how people go out and their lives revolve around the the pursuit of you know um, earning more money to buy stuff they don't need, um, you know which doesn't make them any happier, etc. And for me, that's where minimalism really started. You know, up until then, you know, I was the kind of person who, you know, if I'm quite honest, would go out and buy things all the time because I was lonely and didn't really have you know perhaps a lot of friends or anything or any at all really. I'd spend a lot of time alone, so I'd always sort of buy something new. With, you know, thinking that it would you know, change my life. Just the idea of buying something would make me happy and then I'd go and buy it. And then I'd used to, I used actually probably spent quite a lot of money just buying meaningless stuff over the years. Uh, so for me, watching Drew, Duran Rider uh, really has sort of begun uh, my minimalist, minimalist journey. And then a, a friend of mine in work who introduced me to Rich Roll um who i then introduced uh to sort of june rider well he got me into the minimalists so i never really heard of the the minimalists until he uh talked about them and then i started listening to their podcasts i haven't read their books they've got some books um that you can read to if you want to and i'll try and leave them up around here for you to look at and um so i started listening to the minimalists and the minimalists are two guys um kind of quite uh, so ryan nicodemus and Joshua Fields Milburn, I think that's their names, and they basically talk about how you know they had these high flying jobs, they were in hundreds of thousands uh, every year, but they were never happy. You know they were working seventy five hours a week, and they had all these debts despite the fact they were earning more money. And so I've basically learned a lot from them, and really I'm starting to sort of conform myself to this idea of minimalism, the idea of living a more meaningful life with less. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, some of the books I'm going to get rid of and just perhaps talk about, you know, my thought process. So guys, this is the first book I'm going to get rid of. So this is The Vikings um, in the Isle of Man. Um, so as many of you know, you know, I'm obviously Manx. Um, you know, we have a lot of Celtic and Viking history. And, you know, I find it quite interesting. Uh, but I bought this book and I think I read about half of it and I didn't finish the rest off. Now then, it's not that I don't, I'm not interested in it. It's just that, you know... If you well, if you're honest and you're like me, we all have so much stuff in our lives. We've got jobs. We've got you know so many things going on. You can't do everything at once. Now then, I would like to read this book at some point in in the future. But you know where I am in my life now. I've got you know obviously my work. I've got YouTube. I've got cycling. Uh, I've got other things. So why have this in my bedroom gathering dust when I could give it to a, a local library for someone else? To get benefit from and it all comes down to you know one when i when i purchased this on amazon i lost the money there and then the act of me giving this book away does not mean that i, I i've lost money all it means is you know i'm giving it away to add value to someone else's life and the other thing is i can actually borrow this book back from the library in the future because they'll have it there and I could, I, as a library member, if I wanted to, um, you know, I'm not a library member at the moment, but I, I will get a membership there. I, you know, I could basically borrow it back. So this book here, you know, at the time I got it and I was interested in it and uh, so the folklore of the Isle of Man. But now I'm at the point in my life where I was never really into superstition, but I found it kind of interesting. Whereas now, you know, I wouldn't be interested in this at all. You know, so why have this in my life, sitting on my shelf, collecting dust? When it adds no value to my life and there could be a student out there you know who could derive benefit from it um etc uh this book here i saw on amazon and if you're like me you're one of those people who when you're on amazon or you go shop and you you look at something and then what happens is you imagine your life with that product in it so you imagine how it's going to make you feel you imagine how it's going to make you change your life and i imagine you know buying this book you know reading it it's going to you know educate me it's going to expand my horizons and stuff and i think i bought this something like 2010 and do you know what i never read it it's just been sat on my shelf now then, i'm not saying the book in it itself is bad or there's anything wrong with it i'm sure it's a great book you know mo nearly all books are you know well great probably but you know i bought it with the uh, my, you know with this romanticized view of you know um how i would be different as a result of reading it afterwards but then in reality 
most of the time when you when you have that image of a product or you, you know some kind of um, I am changing your life it doesn't really do it um, so it could be that you know I read this book in the future but I'm not really you know a stage in my life where I'm really interested in this now you know when, when I bought it, I think I was quite interested in global affairs uh, and what have you um, but now you know it's not that I'm not interested in global affairs now as such but I suppose but it's you know we all have a limited amount of time in our lives, don't we? We we all have a limited amount of time that we can spend on different things. So you really need to be sort of wise about what you spend your time on uh, and what you devote your time to, um, you know, to get sort of the maximum value out of your life. So I'm going to give that book away to the library um, so, you know, someone else can derive value from it. Um, like I said, I've already lost the money by the act of purchasing, purchasing, purchasing it, oh, sorry, I couldn't get my words out then. So by me giving it to the library, it doesn't mean I've lose any, I'll lose anything because I've already lost it when I bought it. So I'm going to give that away to them. So this one here, uh, Fareed uh, Zakaria. So this is a book, a, a, a book I bought a while ago, and I don't know why I bought it. I thought you know it might be a, an, an interesting book to read, um, and. Do you know what? I just never read it, so I think I probably bought it because it, I probably saw it in the New York Times or something. Bought it for it might change my life. Well, not quite change my life. Do you know what I mean? But like expand my horizon, etc. Never read it. Why retain it if I'm not going to read it? Let's give it to someone else to get value out of. So this book here uh, by James D. Watson. So this guy here. So he was one of the principal people who discovered DNA. Um, or scientists who discovered D DNA and uh, I actually read this book when uh, I, I was about 20 years old so I was um, living away in a foreign country at the time so I was living, living in uh, Jersey not Jersey as in New Jersey but Jersey as in the Channel Islands between England and France and uh, I bought that book um, I think I might have seen it on Amazon or I might have read an article about him and then gone and bought the book and I found it really interesting at the time I did at the time derive value but I've owned that book now for the last eight years it's been sitting in my bedroom gathering dust it hasn't added, added any value into my life has it it's just been sitting there so why not give it away to someone else who could derive value from it like a student or someone a doctor or someone who's into dna science etc um this book here so uh again about eight years ago i started getting interested in my family tree and i basically went back to my family tree about 400 years uh, I eventually did a DNA analysis and determined that my ancestors were some of the uh, Viking warriors who actually um, came to Alaman about a thousand years ago. And I can actually say the names of um, all of my fo uh, male forebears going back uh, 10 generations now to the 1600s off the top of my head. Uh, and I found relatives all over the world as a result. Uh, but you know what? I actually bought this book here thinking to myself, you know, uh, I was going to help me you know, find loads of relics and stuff. And do you know what? I never actually used it all. I think I might have read a little bit of it, um, if memory serves correct. I'm, I think I've glanced through it. But I actually just managed to do a lot of it on my own anyway. And what I would say is, guys, you know, you might want to go and do your family history and what have you, but, you know, you don't necessarily need to go and buy a book like this to do it. Um, you know, you can use the internet as a free resource to give you an idea on where to start off on. And it doesn't, I'm not just talking about this book in particular, but when whenever it comes to, like, a how to do this or how to do that, consider going on the internet first, like YouTube or, you know, whatever, just Google, and, you know, the, the kind of society we live in now, you know, we, we we sort of live in a sort of, um, what's the correct kind of term we're looking for? You know, there's been a democratization of knowledge. You know, knowledge is no longer the kind of thing that you have to pay for in the form of a book, uh, you know, to get. You know, it's free and accessible. So, you know, for example, in this situation, let's say if you're someone who wants to, to do your family tree, rather than, you know, buy a book like this, instead you could just go on the internet you know and type in you know family tree how do i do my family tree how I, how do i start off on it you know you can engage with people in forums now i'm not slacking off this book or the author of it in any way shape or form that is not what i'm saying i'm just saying you know you don't have to buy something like this you can get it for free online and i'm sure it's probably a great book as well um so this next one perhaps a little bit embarrassing so this one here so when I was about, hmm, let me see, 20, 21, I can't remember now, 
Um, I started, I don't know, I'm not sure if I went for a bit of a midlife crisis or something. And um, I ended up with a tattoo. Um, so I think it was around the Christmas time. I was around a friend's house and I saw a um, tracing of an ancient Manx uh, stone, which is about a thousand years old, and had this uh, dragon on, and I think it's uh, called Fafni. And I got really interested in the story behind it. And then I decided, you know what, I want a tattoo. Um, and then what I did is I went out and bought this book. Um, and it's all about, you know, how to design your own, you know, um, like lettering and Celtic this and Celtic that. And I had this image in my mind that I would be able to buy the book. And then from there, I could then design my own cool stuff, my own, you know, um, you know, tattoo, essentially. Do you know what happened? I never did it. Um, the book sat there. I think I might have glanced it once or twice. And then when I went to the tattoo parlor, told them what I wanted. They did some free designs. They changed them. I said I wanted something a bit bigger. Um, well, I think originally I went in there and said I want something on my forearm because I wanted one like, like my dad's. They said your forearms are too small because I didn't have enough um, protein in my diet. Um, they then um, said, why didn't you get one in your back? And I didn't want a little small tattoo on my, on my back. I thought it might be a bit fem feminine. Uh, so then I got a big one instead, and they did all the work for me, you know, very, you know, you have this image that you're going to buy something and you're going to design this and design that. Realistically, most people, you're not going to do that. And I'm not just talking about specifically tattoos now, but it could be, you know, designing your own home or building your own car. Realistically, how how likely are you going to do things like that? And would would you really be the best person to do that or would you be better off letting someone else do that yeah you know, i'm not a, i'm not an artsy person in any way shape or form i have no artistic skill um you know i, I enjoy you know time lapse and milky way photography i can actually do that i've done that um you know i do i have enjoyed doing a little bit of photography in the past and stuff but you know i can't draw anything i've got terrible skills so what do that what did i Thing when I was when I bought that again I I had this when romanticized view of me buying it and I imagined myself like stenciling out this tattoo and all this stuff but I should have realized hang on you don't have any of these skills you're terrible you you're terrible at art Chris um this next book I'm going to give away so I originally I bought this for my mum um and it's uh, about Welsh history as a present and I'm, I think she I read it or perhaps wasn't too interested in it and anyway she put it back in my room um so I'm just gonna give that away again actually this book here so it looks really interesting looks really good but I have no idea when I'm going to read this I've got loads of books to read I'm you know from different plant-based doctors uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan and um, so I want to uh, read my Star Wars books um, you know catch up on them I enjoy my fiction so I probably will read this book in the future but instead I'm going to give it to my local library so someone else out there can derive benefit from it and if I want to read it I can you know go to the library or if it comes to it you know I could get the book on say Kindle in the future so I'm not gonna you know and the other, the other thing is we need the one thing the minimalists talk about is you know access versus ownership um you know we typically live in you know a society of people where you know ownership is prized above all things but why i mean it isn't about you don't derive benefit from a book by owning it you derive benefit from a book by reading from it and acting upon the knowledge within inside of it i do not have to own this book to gain knowledge from it because I can go to a library and get it um, or I could, you know, um, whatever. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, so try and have a mindset of access over ownership. And if we, we all did that, if everyone in the world did that, we, you know, we'd all be better off. I'm not saying that, you know, apply that to everything. But when it comes to, you know, likes of books and stuff, it works well. And then these three books here. So I bought these thinking, you know, I'd be really interested in it because I am naturally quite a bit of a sci-fi geek and I thought, you know, I'd be really interested in it. And I'm not saying this is science fiction, this is actual real science, but um, I've always been interested in stuff like this. And you know what, I bought these books thinking that, you know, I would read them, I'd derive benefit from them. Um, and I'm sure they would be really interesting. I'm sure if I was sat down and read them, you know, I'd be interested in it. But do you know what, I've owned them for years now and I still haven't read them once and I've got loads of other stuff to read. What makes me think that I'm going to read them soon when if you've been sitting there for years now and I've got lo loads of other stuff to do. And if you ask yourself that, you know, um, I'm sure many of you, when you look around your house, you're probably in the same thing. You might have a book which you really would like to read at some point, but you haven't read it for years. So what makes you think you're going to read it anytime soon, especially if you know you've got your job, kids, family, responsibilities, limited time, etc. So why not give it away to a library 
um, you know, for other people to derive benefit from, and for you to then be able to derive benefit benefit from it again at a later stage. You know, the library will store it for you on their premises, then it's not taking up room in where you live. Um, so that one there was that was about relativity. Um, this one was about quantum theory. Uh, this one was about particle phys physics. Uh, this one here. So I actually did some professional qualifications in Treasury, so foreign exchange, derivatives, yada, yada, yada. I ed tried to educate myself, basically got me nowhere in life. I did um, So taught myself two certificates and a diploma. No teacher taught myself in my bedroom at home. Uh, some quite high-level tough exams. Um, and what I'd say is, you know, to if, if you're watching this, don't necessarily think education is everything. Don't think that education is going to change your life. I had this image that once I did these qualifications, I would be able to land myself a really decent job in, you know, tens of thousands of every, every year, you know, um, be able to, you know, get a house and a family and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what? When I did those qualifications, didn't get anything. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not slagging off qualifications. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get qualifications. I'm just saying don't have a romanticized view of qualifications and think that qualifications are everything and they're going to change your life because the chances are that you could spend just not money but time, lots and lots of time, hundreds of hours or a thousand hours studying for qualifications and it all it's all for naught. I mean, I spent a long time. I'd get up at five o'clock in the morning to study and then go do a full time job and come home. I'd stress myself out. And you know what? I did good, but it's all for nothing. I didn't benefit from it. So all I'm saying is, if you are going to do qualifications, don't do it with a romanticized view. Try and be objective about it. So this book here was about foreign exchange. I bought this originally to help me with my studies, and I never read it because it didn't really pertain to, uh, that much to the exam. I already had loads of other material to read, and um, so what I'm going to do is give this away to the library, and someone there can derive benefit from it. Um, so I hope it's been kind of useful, guys. Um, are there any books I might get rid of? Uh, let's have a look. So guys, found another two books I'm going to give away. So this one here, Shipwrecks on the Isle of Man. So I did actually read uh, not all of this, I think, but I read a chunk of it, if memory serves correct. Quite enjoyed it, uh, but you know what? I'm not really a boat person. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not a ship person. Um, you know, I can't even remember most of the knowledge from it, uh, so I'm going to give that away. Um, and this one here, I did read, I read all of this book, and it was really interesting. So in the Isle of Man, um, we were, um, you know, had a number of pe Manx people who were sent away as slaves. So, you know, everyone thinks of slavery as black people, uh, you know, people from Africa, but, you know, there were white slaves as well. So in the Isle of Man... What they would do is they would send um, Manx people, because we were basically ruled, uh, invaded by England and ruled and controlled by them. And certain uh, Manx people, if they commit crimes, they would be deported and they would be sent into basically slavery um, in, in many cases. So even people, if they stole a sheep to kill it and eat it, um, you know, sorry, I know they were vegans and stuff, but, you know, people back then, they might get hungry. So, you know, someone might steal a sheep to kill it for food because they, were, they and their family were starving. And they could get sent away to prison, and um, well, to, to to be basically, you know, um, a slave essentially. So they get transported to colonies, and they would be put to work. Some of them would get um, eventually get free, I think. Some of them would um, even make their way uh, back to the Isle of Man. I think I think one one or two might have done possibly, uh, but many of them would actually die on the boats um, and what have you. So I haven't actually read this book for about eight years now, so I can't remember all of it off the top of my head, but. Uh, you know, this was a very good book. I derived a lot of knowledge from it, but it's not helping anyone else by sitting on my shelf. It's not helping me now because I'm not reading it. So let's give it away to someone else who can derive benefit from it, who, who can learn about our Manx ancestors and perhaps what they went they went through. Um, so that's basically it, guys. So I hope you, this has been some kind, of, some kind of use to you. So what I'd say to you is if you've... Um, you know, if you're like me, you know, you've got loads of books and stuff at home, you know, perhaps consider, you know, having a look through and ask yourself a number of questions, you know, one, uh, do I really, do I want to own this book still? Two, am I ever going to read this book? Three, what value is this adding to my life? You know, four, can I give this away to someone else and add value to their life instead? You know, it, ask yourself these different questions do you really want these books do you really need these books i mean all all these books here i mean look at how many books there are you know i'm probably never going to read these books like i said so why not just give them away i mean some of them would be interesting to read definitely but we you know i have a limited amount of time like everyone else other things i want to do so 
if I give them away to the library, I can go back at another stage and read them. Um, and it's as simple as that, really. So I hope this has been useful, guys. I hope you derive some benefit from it. Like I said, please check out The Minimalists. Um, so what I'm trying to do at the moment is basically, you know, I'm trying to minimalize, um, you know, all of the stuff in my life. I want to get myself to the bare essentials. Um, and it's not, not, when I say bare essentials, I don't mean deprive myself but i just want to get rid of anything that i don't use that's broken or that doesn't add value in my life you know i'm hoping that i'm gonna and um uh, move out next year so i'm still living at home uh you know in the isle of man it's not easy to move out and buy your own house and stuff but i'm hoping next year april time uh god willing i might be able to get my own home um and, and i don't want to go there taking loads of like stuff that i don't need so uh this is one of sort of the reasons why i want to get rid of all this stuff and it's just not that, that, that though i'd like the idea of you know living a life free from all this stuff having more space having more you know um you know build space basically just not physically but also to facilitate space in my mind mentally so i'm not worried about things i'm not thinking about things um I, i'll give you a good example i remember when i was younger like, uh, I used to think about, you know, like, when I would die, and, you know, what would happen to my stuff, and the idea of, like, say, you know, dying and my stuff, like, going to weirdo, well, strangers, sorry, but when I was younger, I thought, you know, oh, like, strangers or weirdos or people you don't know, I thought to myself, I don't want them touching my stuff, so, you know, you'd think to yourself, you know, oh, I don't want, you know, kids to pass all my stuff on to, I know it sounds really stupid, but, um, you know, you'd have this idea that, you know, who's going to look after all my stuff and you would almost worry about it and you know think about it and you know i'm sure a lot of people you know do that they they worry about their stuff but it's like why why not get rid of the stuff um so sorry this has been a bit of a long video guys i hope there's been some use to someone um you know perhaps talk about you know let me know about your minimalism uh in the comments below did you like this video do you want to see a bit more from me and what i'll try and do is i'll probably try to do videos a bit more often talk about minimalism you know things i've learned um i'm trying to pass on different uh you know tips to you you know please check out the minimalists uh they do a great podcast ignore their advice uh, and podcasts and health because they're not very good if i'm honest with you um i don't really like those podcasts and health he did one or two that they, they weren't good but other than that it's really good it'll help change your mindset uh you know uh word of advice you know they do have swearing in there so you might want to be careful uh you know if you don't like swearing or you know you've got kids around and you don't want them to hear it so yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead now, guys, because I've been talking for ages, uh, probably longer than I should have done. And yeah, so I hope you've liked this video. Uh, until next time, God bless as always. And remember, as always, go high carb, low fat, low protein, high fiber, whole food, plant-based vegan. Bye-bye. Miss and Joshua Fields Milburn, I think that's their names, and they basically talk about how, you know, they had these high-flying jobs, they were in hundreds of thousands uh, every year, but they were never happy, you know, they were working 75 hours a week, and they had all these debts, despite the fact they were earning more money, and so I've basically learned a lot from them, and really I'm starting to sort of conform myself to this idea of minimalism, the idea of le living a more meaningful life with less, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, some of the books I'm going to get rid of and just perhaps talk about, you know, my thought process. So guys, this is the first book I'm going to get rid of. So this is The Vikings um, in the Isle of Man. Um, so as many of you know, you know, I'm obviously Manx. Um, you know, we have a lot of Celtic and Viking history. And, you know, I find it quite interesting. Uh, but I bought this book and I think I read about half of it and I didn't. Hi guys, Chris here. So, as many of you might remember, I actually did a video a while ago, which you can watch up here, called Vegan and Minimalism, or Veganism and Minimalism, something like that. And really, the whole minimalism journey for me started with Dune Rider. So, Dune Rider turned me vegan in November 2014, and then I started to learn a lot about minimalism from him. So, he would talk about um, how to basically, you know, how people go out and their lives revolve around the the pursuit of you know um, earning more money to buy stuff they don't need, um, you know, which doesn't make them any happier, etc. And for me, that's where minimalism really started. You know, up until then, you know, I was the kind of person who, 
you know, if I'm quite honest, would go out and buy things all the time because I was lonely and didn't really have, you know, perhaps a lot of friends or anything or, or any at all really. I'd spend a lot of time alone. So I'd always sort of buy something new with, you know, thinking that it would, you know, change my life. Just the idea of buying something would make me happy and then I'd go and buy it. And then I'd I used to, I actually probably spent quite a lot of money just buying meaningless stuff over the years. Uh, so for me, watching Dur Duran Rider uh, really has sort of begun uh, my minimalist, minimalist journey and then uh, a friend of mine in work who introduced me to Rich Roll um, who I then introduced uh, to sort of Dune Rider well he got me into the minimalists so I never really heard of the, the minimalists until he uh, talked about them and then I started listening to their podcasts I haven't read their books they've got some books um, that you can read to if you want to and I'll try and leave them up around here for you to look at and um, so I started listening to the minimalists, and the minimalists are two guys. Um, can't not quite. Uh, so Ryan Nicodem finished the rest off. Now then, it's not that I don't. I'm not interested in it. It's just that you know, if you well, if you're honest and you're like me, we all have so much stuff in our lives. We've got jobs. We've got you know so many things going on. You can't do everything at once. Now then, I would like to read this book at some point in in the future. But, you know, where I am in my life now, I've got, you know, obviously my work, I've got YouTube, I've got cycling, uh, I've got other things. So why have this in my bedroom gathering dust when I could give it to a, a local library for someone else to get benefit from? And it all comes down to, you know, one, one, when I when I purchased this on Amazon, I lost the money there and then. The act of me giving this book away does not mean that I, I, I've lost money. All it means is, you know... I'm giving it away to add value to someone else's life. And the other thing is I can actually borrow this book back from the library in the future because they'll have it there. And I could, I, as a library member, if I wanted to, um, you know, I'm not a library member at the moment, but I, I will get a membership there. I, you know, I could basically borrow it back. So this book here, you know, at the time I got it and I was interested in it and uh, so the folklore of the Isle of Man. But now I'm at the point in my life where I was never really into superstition, but I found it kind of interesting. Whereas now, you know, I wouldn't be interested in this at all. You know, so why have this in my life sitting on my shelf collecting dust when it adds no value to my life? And there could be a student out there, you know, who could derive benefit from it, um, etc. Uh, this book here I saw on Amazon and... If you're like me, you're one of those people who, when you're on Amazon or you go shop and you, you look at something and then what happens is you, Im 